Hello and welcome to Dollarcast Rescue. Uh, today we're going to be dealing with a dinky 721 Stuka dive bomber from the 1970s, which has been very battered and is in fact being used as a hammer, I think. It's very bent out of shape and uh, we're going to actually uh, bend it back into shape without breaking it. Watch this space. So basically we don't have very much uh, of the uh, plane to start with. We're missing the canopy, propeller, bomb, bomb release mechanism, tail wheel, screws. Um, I think that's covered it. So basically we're only left with the two main castings and the undercarriage. So the main issue we have with the uh, fuselage of this is it's, it's actually twisted out of shape. So if you look at it for a few angles you'll actually start to see what the problem is. So there I think you can see there's a bit of a twist. I think it's been used as a hammer. So first we need to get two screws to hold the thing together with. And we're going to get these from a donor model. So I have two of these Hawker Harriers. Uh, that are both very smashed up and this is the worst one so the idea is I'm going to take some spares out of this to fix up the other one so for this uh, video we're going to steal its screws and use those in the Stuka So as you can see, even using the screws to try and sort of twist the model together to itself, you can see that the tail is still quite twisted. So we're going to have to do something about that. Now on the internet I had read that if you use heat, you can bend die-cast metal. So I'm proposing to use a heat gun, which should be used for, let's say, stripping paint, rather than a gas torch. Um, I'm going to heat the model up around this fuselage and I'm going to give it a twist with a pair of pliers. So I'm just using a trigger clamp to hold the model still. If you have a vice I suppose that would be better but I don't have one. Uh, I'm applying heat to the tail and just giving a light twist to the tail as it's been heated with a pair of mole grips. I actually did this a couple of times to just fine tune the bending and twisting on the tail, but basically in total it took about five minutes, literally. And it was as simple as this. Basically put the uh, metal under tension to where you want it to go, whilst heating it, and then take the heat off, let it cool, and it stays put, and it does not crack. bad. Okay so here we go with paint stripper. I'm trying to use as little as possible now so I'm not accused of wasting any. <laughs> the paint came off quite easily and required one coat of paint stripper to remove it. Only a few spots of paint uh, were not removed and I'll just use the rotary tool to remove that. Now the wheels are a bit damaged from being hit on the ground or whatever it was whoever had the uh, plane before had done with it. Uh, but I'm not going to replace them, I'm just going to paint them to make them look better. Okay, so we just skipped on slightly and we've put some grey primer on the plane and uh, I'm going to use some Vallejo, Vallejo uh, colours 
uh, based on the RLM colours that are of the period and just see if we can give the uh, this dinky more of a correct colour scheme and look but still sort of try and keep it in the style of a um, dinky that would have been produced at the time but just use better colours. So basically we're going to use an RLM uh, colours of um, like a light blue, a yellow, a green and a black green. So here we're just spraying the RLM light blue to the underside of the whole uh, plane. And we're doing very little masking here because it's a lighter colour. It's really masking out the wheels and what will be the yellow part of the plane. The RLM blue is actually a very pale and faded looking blue compared to the very bright blue that the 1970s dinky was actually painted in originally. Now we're going to apply RLM green uh, to all the upper surfaces of the model and we're going to do a little bit of masking so the blue is not over painted by accident. Masking tape is Tamiya modelling masking tape which you can get in various widths and it has the advantage that it sticks very well but it won't lift your paint and uh, it sort of seals along its edges so generally you don't get any bleed under the tape. So that's the uh, fuselage uh, just about finished and now move on to the rest of the aeroplane. Again, we're going to use the same green colour over the whole upper surface of the model. Basically we're painting from light to dark colours. Now I'm actually speeding up the uh, painting process because it's probably not very interesting to watch. But I mean, if uh, people would rather watch uh, the painting process not speed it up, um, I can do that. Just let me know in the comments. We're now moving on to the black green uh, parts of the camouflage, which is like obviously a darker green. And you can see I've masked out the model to apply this uh, pattern, this broken up camouflage pattern. I'm just showing you here the Vallejo Vajio, uh, RLM70 that I'm using. This is quite a dark colour, so it covers very well, but even so it'll still get two coats. Okay, so the paint's been applied, and now we get to uh, unwrap the masking, and we'll see what sort of result we have. Now the paint did lift in a couple of spots, so I'm not going to use that primer again, I think. But I can touch that up afterwards, no problem. Okay, so now the last uh, little bit of stage of the painting is going to be uh, applying the yellow paintwork to the tail and to the engine cover. And to save on masking tape here, I've made use of a uh, sandwich bag. Now the yellow that's used on, the, on these planes is actually quite a greeny yellow, so it actually takes a few coats to actually build it up. Right, it's all coming together now. Oh dear me. Oh, I'll have to touch that one up by hand later on. I did say the tape's usually quite good at uh, stopping paint from running under it, but obviously I made a mistake there. Okay, so the paint job's nearly complete, and uh, now we have a replacement canopy, which we got online. It has a little bit of flashing, but we can trim that off with a knife. Now 
was really debating with this whether or not to actually paint the canopy uh, to put the lines in for the framing but as they're not very raised details I thought I wouldn't risk it as I just end up with a load of wonky lines so I thought I'd just leave it more as a factory uh, model and leave it unpainted. Okay we're just putting the canopy on which is just a little bit of a snap fit. It goes on fairly easily. I'm just being careful here not to scratch the paint as I do it. They're almost as good as new. Now I've got a set of uh, replacement uh, decals for this model online, which were a mixture of transfers and water slide decals. Now I have to admit, I'm not entirely pleased with them. They're not quite there in quality terms. I think um, if I was doing this again, I'd have experimented with uh, doing making my own deta decals or maybe even getting ones for a 148 scale kit maybe would have probably been the nearest and use those instead. But to be honest the uh, original dinky transfers weren't great uh, so you could argue it's kind of more authentic. Okay, now here I've opened the plane up again to fit the bomb release mechanism uh, and I've had to resource these uh, from the internet. So it's basically just a spring and a very simple catch that lets the bomb drop from the plane. Now as the transfer goes over the casting halves on the side of the plane, uh, this section all has to be done before that happens, otherwise uh, if we ever have to do anything to the plane again it'll actually damage the transfers. I also sourced a replacement propeller from the internet, but I didn't realise that you actually need to order a pin to go in the propeller as well. So what I've done is I've cut a uh, small tack in half that would be used for like, like a panel pin, uh, and that is making a satisfactory replacement for that. Okay, and now with uh, the propeller sorted out and the bomb release fitted, we can now put the two halves of the plane back together again for the last time. Okay, now we're putting the screws in for the last time. Okay, the propeller uh, spins freely. It's a shame that they didn't actually make this as a motorised uh, model, but uh, never know. That could be another job for another day. Now the casting of the bomb um, is a bit rough around its. Uh, it's hooked onto the plane, so I had to do a bit of filing before it was actually dropping out properly. There you go. Okay, so the last two sets of uh, transfers are actually water slide ones. I'm just going to use some Microsol or Microset uh, just to help them stick to the uh, plane. Basically, you just put these things on fairly wet and you get a little bit of time to slide them around. Just use a wet brush to smooth them out, or a piece of sponge, uh, or your finger. As long as, it's, as, long as uh, everything doesn't stick to anything, it should be fine. And again, I have to. I'm not crazy about the quality of these transfers, so maybe, uh, maybe if I was doing this again, I would actually try and get some modelling purposed uh, transfers for another Stuka. Okay, so the engine is, for my mind, too yellow. Uh, it's just one colour, so I decided just to paint in the exhaust stubs on the engine just to give it a bit of uh, detail. Right, as a last finishing job I'm going to paint the tyres black. Uh, but that's it really, so should we get it on the turntable and see what it looks like?
Okay, so just to remind you what it looked like when we started, it's a bit sorry for itself. And now it looks like this, which I think is a slight improvement. So we've put a new bomb on it, we've put a new propeller on it, we've put a new canopy on it. We replaced the bomb release mechanism because that was missing completely. And we also fixed the um, really hideous distortion that the fuselage has where it had been twisted and bent, probably from being used as a hammer. So I think it's come out quite well. So if you like what you've seen, you want to see more, please subscribe. By all means comment and it'd be great if you leave a like. Right, okay, and thank you for watching.